As I said earlier, I'm Mr. Ian Martin with Melt uh, Water is going to be our guest speaker for today's luncheon. So I'll just do a little introduction. Mr. Martin is a recognized leader known for his steadfast focus on safety leadership, asset management, performance, and growth. Mr. Ed Barton has been leading Nelco Energy and its subsidiaries since 2005. <clears throat> As Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Martin is stewarding the development of Newfoundland Labrador's energy resources towards energy sustainability and provincial prosperity. He led the transformation of a Crown-owned electric utility into Nelco Energy, comprised of six lines of business. They are Newfoundland, Newfoundland Labrador Hydro, Churchill Falls Labrador Corporation, Nelcor Oil and Gas Limited, Lower Churchill Project, Nelcor Bull Arm Fabrication, and Nelcor Energy Marketing. With Mr. Martin's guidance and leadership, Nelcor, Nelcor Energy is leading large-scale energy developments and operations in both the hydropower and oil and gas sectors. This includes advancing the province's hydropower developments, equity ownership in three offshore oil and gas projects, operation of two electric, electrical utilities and ownership of a fully integrated industri industrial fabrication site. A graduate of Memorial University of Newfoundland, the Bachelor of Commerce, and the University of Calgary, a Master of Business, Business Administration, Mr. Martin has over 30 years of experience in the energy sector with roots in the oil and gas sector. He was named Energy Person of the Year by the Energy, energy Council of Canada. In 2011, Mr. Martin was named one of Canada's 2012 Clean 50 and Clean 16 from Corporate Light Sink in the Delta Management Group in recognition of Nelcor's, Nelcor Energy's environmental efforts. He is also a founding member of the Newfoundland Labrador CEO Safety Charter. <clears throat> and Mr. Martin resides in St. John's, Newfoundland with his wife Mary Lou. They have four sons and one grandson. So, without any further ado, Mr. Martin. Well, good afternoon, folks. Uh, very pleased to be here in Clarenceville to meet all you people. Hoping to come back uh, later in the fall or the summer to meet with a couple of smaller groups as well. Um, it's an opportunity to spend some time with business leaders here and, and throughout the island. We're doing more and more of this. We're trying to get away from some of the big presentations with you know hundreds of people and all that good stuff and get out to talk to the people who actually own, own the company and give you an understanding of what's happening. So hopefully you'll see more of us, and I'm sure you will and in a more informal setting and um, and I hope at the end of this uh, think of some questions I'm good for for a while I, I, I guess you folks are driving the time but if you want to ask a few questions it's a great opportunity for us to have a dialogue uh, you know before I leave here today uh, but today I've come uh, for the purpose of discussing our great province and the role that Alcor Energy plays in developing a strong economic future for uh, the next generation um, now that being said any discussion of our future must begin from where we are right now at this particular point in time. Our province is currently facing an economic slowdown precipitated by a steep drop in oil uh, and commodity prices. And this change in our situation must be a concern for you as it is for me, for all who live in the island, all who live in Labrador, and all who do, do business here. But despite the challenges which lie before us, today part of my message to you is one of optimism, of vision, and of fortitude. Qualities which I know have to be in abundant supply in this room. Your business successes have no doubt been anchored in these very things over the past years. There's a difference with this particularly economically challenging time, however. Never before in Newfoundland and Labrador's history have we entered a downturn which such a solid groundwork lay beneath our feet. As a province, we've reaped the benefits of nearly a decade of unprecedented growth. Uh, which is a strong foundation for long-term growth and prosperity. We've hit an economic downturn, no doubt, but our vision, which I will share with you today, as your energy company, remains strong and totally focused. The heart of Nelcor Energy and our team is fueled by our vision as a company. We work every day to secure a strong economic future for successive generations of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, your children and mine. Let me tell you how we arrived at that vision. Before I joined the company in 2005, I spent most of my career in the oil and gas uh, business. I worked in the Nova Scotia offshore and Western Canada and Calgary before returning home to Newfoundland to work on the Great Hibernia Project in the mid-90s. 
For me, offshore Newfoundland and Labrador was my way home. I worked for another 20 years in the oil and gas business with Mobile Oil and Petro-Canada, uh, primarily with Hibernia, Terranova, and the White Rose projects, before I took the opportunity to lead the creation of a new energy company for this province. You may recall some of the voices of the naysayers at the time. This province was to have its own energy company. This province thinks it can be at the table and work and play with the big players. Well, my response was, and still is a simple one, absolutely, yes. Writer Jared Kinch said this, if the status quo came carbonated in a can, I'd shake things up. <laughs> Newfoundland and Labrador was about to shake things up, and I was totally thrilled to be part of it. And since July 2005, we've not looked back. Make no mistake, few jurisdictions in North America or possibly the world can match the tremendous value of Newfoundland and Labrador's vast energy resources. Oil, gas, hydro, wind, and others. Nalcor Energy was officially launched in 2008 as the People's Energy Company, meaning we work on behalf of each and every one of you and your families here in Newfoundland and Labrador. The company was created to lead the development of our vast resources. Today, as mentioned in the introduction, Nalcor Energy is a diverse energy company in the electricity, oil and gas, and industrial fabrication businesses. We are doing business around the world, representing this province, and when necessary, going toe to toe with the biggest and best of the global companies. Our goal has been to show that Newfoundland and Labrador has what it takes to be a global energy leader. And I can ensure you, when we travel the world, we may be a small province of 500,000 people, but we punch well above our weight throughout the world, and we have that feedback given to us all the time. Novelist Anatole France said, to accomplish great things, we must not only act, but also dream. Not only plan, but also believe. And I can assure you, our team believes. Where some see challenge, now of course sees opportunity. Where some say it cannot be done, we say let's find a way. Like any energy company, we know and expect ups and downs in energy prices. We know what's required to navigate the challenges of a depressed market. In fact, every one of our businesses at Nelcor has downturn scenarios built into their original plans. They account for the impacts of energy price fluctuations, cost escalation, and the ever-present concerns of government regulators and people of the province like yourselves. This is essential to being a responsible custodian of our province's energy resources. While we are equipped and ready to manage the downturn, we know it's temporary. We will see a recovery in oil prices and our economy will bounce back. I am confident in saying that because of the strong foundation as a province and as an energy company we've created over the past 10 years. From oil and gas projects to hydro developments, Nalcor has made prudent business decisions based on fundamental business economics. Well, let me ask you this. If you had an opportunity to make an investment that would reap double-digit inflation, or sorry, double-digit returns, would you take it or watch the opportunity slide by? One of Nalcor's first series of major investments was becoming an equity partner in the White Rose Extension Project, the Hibernia Extension Project, and the Hebron Project. This was pivotal in establishing our seat at the table, a seat representing yourselves, the people of the province. These equity investments will earn us, on average, a 15% return. Fair to say it's an investment most of us would make if provided with the opportunity. Our offshore oil story a few years ago was one of A, limited potential, B, not enough exploration, and C, declining reserves. Not a good picture. The picture today is very, very different. In 2010, Alcor Energy Oil and Gas launched what has evolved into the largest seismic programs in the world as a means of minimizing risk in early exploration to find new oil and gas resources for the people of the province. Our strategy is working. We are adding a new chapter to our oil and gas story. <coughs> We are being approached by oil companies around the world who have taken notice of the data that tells them our offshore region may well represent one of the most exciting new regions for development that exists in the world today. 
In 2012, we marked the start of construction on Muskrat Falls. The economics of this project were clear from the start. Muskrat Falls, with a transmission link to the island, was and is the lowest cost option for consumers. We made the decision to sanction. We understand that this project, like many big projects of this magnitude and historical significance, they had Bernie in the 90s or Beta Spear in the 60s, such projects bring their fair share of criticism and debate. With the benefit of hindsight, however, we know that investments in clean, renewable energy resources are good, excellent, long-term investments. The Beta Spear development today is the anchor in our system, and every other hydro project we have invested in since the 60s, including Cat Arm, Heinz Lake, Granite Canal, and Upper Salmon. All of these projects will continue to provide stable, clean, renewable power for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians for decades and centuries to come. They were and continue to be very, very prudent decisions. Today, we are well underway in making our electricity system in Newfoundland and Labrador over 98% renewable. When Muskrat's clean hydropower comes to the island, we will still be using electricity and we'll still be paying our power bills. But this time we'll be writing the check to ourselves and investing in an asset we own. As opposed to sending a significant portion of that monthly payment to oil companies outside of Newfoundland and Labrador to fuel the oil fire holy road generating plant. Clean renewable power is not a 20-year investment, nor is it a 50 to 60-year investment. It is a forever investment. We will pay off the initial investment in Muskrat Falls, not once, but many, 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 many times over, with the revenue from this development. As long as the rain falls, generations to come in this province will benefit from an asset that they own outright. And that is a legacy to be proud of. All in all, the past 10 years and the accomplishment I have outlined have been about harnessing the wealth of our natural resources and transforming this wonderful province into an energy powerhouse, while always staying true to our vision of securing a strong economic future for future generations. And our work continues. Over the past 10 years, we have improved our safety record, reducing our injury frequency by 75%, and last year, for the first time in our history, we had no lost time accidents throughout the full company. Safety is deeply rooted in our culture and core to how we do business. You can ask any employee at any time across the company, and they will tell you we live and work for the safety of our workers and their families. Annually, we are continually <coughs> achieving our environmental targets. 99% achievement rate in 2014. We are passionate about reducing our environmental footprint and our environmental management system, there are our ISO 14001 certi certified, internationally certified, pushes us to continually improve our environmental performance as well. Our capital, our capital program execution and project management have been on a climb to excellence over the past eight years. A steady focus on managing project costs, quality and risks has seen us increase our performance by over 20%, putting us in the top 10% when compared to industry standards globally. We are a good employer. We're focused on recruiting and retaining a diverse workforce, primarily Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, all of our children and, their, and hopefully their grandchildren, valuing our employees and engaging them in our business. Our employees always work with our, within our core values, safety, open communication, honesty and trust, teamwork, leadership, and respect and dignity. In our communities, our employees give back through our volunteer programs and employee giving. Nelcor donates annually to hundreds of charities around the province, primarily in the areas of safety, health, and environment. We live and work throughout this province, and our people care passionately about their neighbors and their communities. Financially, when I first came to the company, we were in no position to grow or invest. Indeed, the balance sheet needed, to say the least, a tremendous amount of work. I'm proud to say today, as we are in the middle of, of a tremendous growth and investment phase, that our key financial metrics are very, very strong. On your behalf, Nalcor's total asset base has grown from $2 billion to nearly $11 billion today. 
and is projected to reach $14 billion by 2018. Revenue has increased substantially, and the company's balance sheet is in a strong and continually improving position. Now, while we're passionate and excited about these growth efforts that's, that are happening, we're also, we also understand the people of the province expect us to take care of our current operating businesses, ensuring that the people of Newfoundland and Labrador have the power they need to live their lives and run their businesses. Our focus for Hydro, Newfoundland and Labrador Hydro, and Churchill Falls has been on safety, performance, reliability, and rebuilding the aging electricity infrastructure. We know that investing in the system is an absolute necessity. Last year, over $209 million was invested in Newfoundland and Labrador Hydro, and some $490 million over the past five years. Our motivation for these investments is simple, to ensure our electricity infrastructure, most of which is now exceeding 45 years old, is able to meet the needs of this province for generations to come. Beyond meeting our own electricity needs, we have a huge portfolio of additional electricity projects available for export. And we're sitting next to the largest markets in the world, the United States in particular, New England, but also Quebec and Ontario. We have wind potential, the best in North America, well over 5,000 megawatts. We have Gull Island, the second jewel of the Lower Churchill. The greatest project left in North America today is, as, uh, as, as uh, rated by an independent assessor, 2,250 megawatts of clean, green hydropower. We have a suite of other hydro projects throughout the province which can be built for export, smaller but still significant. And Churchill Falls, the great Churchill Falls, 5,400 megawatts, the fifth largest hydro plant by output in the world. I often like to tell people, two and a half times bigger than the Hoover Dam. People don't realize that. It's one, of the, it's one of the wonders of the world. It is an asset that has proven very profitable for Hydro Quebec and its shareholders. We know that. But come 2041, when Churchill Falls reverts back to our full control, that plant and the energy it produces will bring those profits back to Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. And make no mistake, in this business, uh, we all understand that 25 years is a blink. I think where you, where you were 25 years ago, especially some of the older people in this, in, this, uh, in, in this audience, and it really makes you realize just how fast that's coming. So with all this uh, electricity potential, we looked beyond our borders in 2009 when we embarked on the Muskrat Falls development. Once complete, we will be, for the first time in our history, connected two ways to the energy-hungry North American markets, through Quebec and through the maritime provinces into the New England states. We are trading our surplus energy into those markets and we're doing it ourselves for the first time in our history. To accomplish this, last year we created a new energy marketing division and we set up our own in-house 24-hour, 7-day energy trading desk, the first ever in this province. We hired a group of talented, bright, highly educated young Newfoundlanders and Labradorians and now they are becoming world-class energy traders. The North American energy markets are like the stock markets. They're open for business all of the time, and our talented young team of traders are selling our surplus energy power today on behalf of us and making money for Newfoundland and Labrador every day. And our energy portfolio will continue to grow over the coming years with the development of muskrat and increased production from Alcor's oil and gas offshore interests. Our trading team our young trading team is poised to continue to maximize the value we get from these resources and grow our business exponentially in both oil and gas and electricity as these developments unfold. Now at Bull Arm, when we took over the ownership and operation, the site was practically dormant and lacked investment processes and a prudent approach to marketing the site to potential tenants. Nelcor invested heavily in the site and has attracted consistent business since we transitioned operations into the company. Bull Arm is the largest industrial fabrication site in Atlantic Canada, another world-class facility, and an important asset for the development of the oil and gas industry in this <coughs> province. We have aggressive long-term plans for this site and will continue to build business opportunities post heat run. We're very active in that sector right now. Now back to our offshore oil and gas potential, simply put, 
it's massive. Make no mistake, it's massive. We have one of the most promising and least explored offshore areas that exists in the world today. It's also one of the most successful in terms of performance to date. Developments at Hibernia, White Rose, and Terra Nova produced more than 79 million barrels of oil in 2014. The Alcor's equity interests in the White Rose extension, Hibernia Southern extension, and Hebron have been lucrative. Last year, our equity holdings earned us $74 million in gross revenue. The developments paid, we paid some $9.8 million in royalties to the provincial government directly as opposed to, in addition to the fact that anything we earn other than that still belongs to the government and the people. Everything we own flows through to you folks. Over the life of the projects, these developments alone will deliver over $1.8 in government royalties into your pockets and generate over $3 billion in net cash flow to Nalcar Energy, which also goes into your pockets. There's something to be said for having a seat at the table. As I mentioned earlier, Nalcor Oil and Gas is executing one of the world's largest ongoing geoscience programs in the world today. We have made very, very significant large investments in 2D and 3D seismic, 3D electromagnetic surveys, and satellite slip mapping. These are the bread and butter tools for the international exploration community. The extensive data analysis from our team of geoscientists have shown that we have a tremendous, tremendous future in our offshore oil business. Just tremendous. By investing in this data up front and opening it up for global oil companies, we are promoting a competitive offshore, attracting investment from around the world. These are exciting times in our province that will not be dampened by a temporary economic slowdown. Now since 2008, the government of Newfoundland and Labrador has invested $1.5 billion in Alcor Energy to fund investments in Muskrat Falls and our oil and gas equity positions, ensuring we are financially positioned to grow the business over time. By 2017-18, we expect that investment from the government into Nalcor to grow to $3.1 billion. These are investments that are already generating significant employment and economic benefits to the province. Businesses and people across this province are working to build Muskrat Falls and the oil developments. We're building the greatest economic diversion, diversification this province has ever seen. As I mentioned, within five years, by 2019, Nelcor, on your behalf, will be managing an asset base of $14 billion and generating net income every year in the range of $350 to $500 million per year, every year. These kinds of earnings will enable us to pay back the government's investment. So by 2025, we will have completely repaid the government's initial $3.1 billion investment. Paid off. After that, if we do nothing else, other than what we have in hand now, we expect to return an additional $12 billion over the 17 years left leading up to 2041. That's additional to the three billion payback. After 2041, it's clear, as a conservative estimate, if we do nothing else from here on in, we will be returning in excess of one billion dollars each year for reinvestment in Newfoundland and Labrador from our portfolio of energy developments. Remember, that's assuming we don't do anything else with wind, with gall, any other oil developments, no other hydro developments. If we just bird in the hand, we know that we will be well in excess of a billion dollars a year being returned to the people of the province from Nalcor post-2041. Nalcor Energy is your company. We exist to benefit the people of this province. We exist to steward our, our abundance of resources. And our team, and I'd be remiss if I did not speak for a moment about the exceptional team of employees that make up Nalcor Energy. They work from Maine to St. John's. They're passionate, talented, highly skilled, highly educated, and invested every single day in working for the betterment of this province. They believe in our vision, and they believe in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. With the tremendous breadth and depth of our business interests, our strategy remains squarely anchored in our vision of opportunity and prosperity for future generations. 
even as we navigate the short-term challenges that we're faced with today. We will continue our work on Muskrat Falls, getting ready for first power. We will rebuild our electricity system and provide you with secure and reliable electricity supply. We will continue building our energy trading team and grow the benefits from selling our power and oil into the North American energy markets. We will continue to invest in seismic as a means of making the offshore Newfoundland and Labrador more attractive in a world that competes fiercely for investment capital. We will manage our offshore interests with your best interests in mind. And we will continue to reach out to the world's major energy leaders to ensure that Newfoundland and Labrador remains their first choice for future investment as the years go by. So I ask you, share our vision, a bright vision for Nalcor Energy, a bright vision for you and your businesses, and a bright vision for our province to secure a strong economic future for successive generations of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, for my grandchildren and yours. We are your company, we're the state of Newfoundland and Labrador, and we're Nalcor Energy. Thank you very much. On that note, <laughs> um, I do like taking questions. I'll sit, I'll stay here for a few minutes. You know, and obviously you don't have to ask questions, or you, you can write them up. But it is a pretty informal opportunity to have a chat. But anything that's on your mind, um, so there's no real limitations. Lots of stuff happening, and I'll just open the floor now and take some questions and stay as long as you as long as you wish. Yeah. You want more water? No. <laughs> uh, just a, I'll just I'll just bring it to a much narrower level in the Clarenville area. I don't know how much you realize that the decisions that you guys make have on this town. You know, we've got 120 homes built in this town thanks to large part to uh, the bull arm cycle. You know, it's tremendous. But 2017 is coming very very fast, and you alluded to it in your speech with regards to the future of the bull arm site and future projects. From a town of Clarenville point of view. What do we have to look forward to at Bull Arm post Hebron? So, uh, so our, what our strategy is, uh, what we're, what we're, you know, there, there's two, two pieces to it, I guess. Obviously, it's a Bull Arm, as you folks probably know more than most, uh, it's, there's two facilities there really a GBS dry dock facility for building the spent bases, and there's a top size facility. And, uh, and I, I guess in the future, um, there, there could and probably will be some more GBSs as, as they continue to develop the Jean d'Arc and in around that, uh, that shelf area before it goes into the deep water. But one thing we've discovered, and give a lot of background here, one thing we've discovered in our seismic work is that uh, we see the biggest and largest prospects in the future. We're seeing them in our slope and deep water, mm -hmm. uh, which means uh, directionally, not, not, not all in, but directionally I think that we're going to be heading the floaters offshore in Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, as we move ahead, because that's where all the big prospects are in the deep water, and it's just too deep for GBSs. So we're certainly going to keep the GBS uh, and the dry dock piece ready and available and for any other uh, development. But a lot of our focus uh, is turning to making sure that we have, uh, working with uh, you know, the Exxons and the companies, make sure our productivity is good, make sure our supervision is good, there, make sure the, uh, the labor contracts are structured in such a way we, we can get our productivity where we need. Because we think there's a niche early on for a period of time in taking overflow work potentially from other uh, big projects worldwide that are going on. We have the relationships with the Exxons and the Chevrons and the Suncors and the Huskies. And all this is happening around in the Stadwells all around the world. So <coughs> part of our strategy is to say we need to create a situation where we can take overflow work from other these areas to keep the project or keep the, the, the areas going. So we'd like, we would ra almost rather have a, a smaller workforce with a constant flow of work there rather than this project to project thing. And that, 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 so that's our first goal is to chase that. Um, the second goal, uh, or the second, I guess, sub goal is, uh, is no, there's no surprise we're, we're talking to Stato about the Beta Nord development. I expect it to be a floater. It's going to be a floater. It's deep water. But there's obviously uh, a top size associated with that. So we're going to be working with the province of Stato, and we, we're actually involved in the negotiations. I can't say much more than, about that, but naturally there's you know, there's, there's a lot of cost considerations to make, sure, make sure we're productive, but you know, what, what I have seen in Muskrat and what I've seen in Hibernia Terra Nova is that our workers are some of the best workers in the world. From a quality perspective, if you look at a well, well reject rates, best in the world. I mean, we have the workers, we have the skilled workers. 
What we have to do is two things, is make sure that they're working in an environment where they can allow their skills to flourish. And that means a combination of providing proper supervision and planning from the management side and you know, proper union practices in terms of allowing productivity to happen. So that's going to be our goal, working with some of the folks there to try to get that moving. But the workers themselves are excellent. We just got to give them, we have to give the right atmosphere to blossom. If, if we do that, I believe we're going to be uh, successful in attracting a lot of that work. Uh, in the in the um, in the longer term, our goal with the seismic work, and we and we see this is what happened in Norway, which we which we work with a lot, is that the type of stuff that we're seeing in the seismic uh, information, we're making it available to everyone in the world, uh, as opposed to being in, prior to, to to the change we just made, we had a, we had a, 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 a system in the world where. Uh, the land, what they call the land tenure system, is that we allowed the oil companies to come in and say, we want to bid this land for development at this particular time. So they sort of drove the timing of when they were going to bid on lands, which created an environment where an oil company could come in and do some seismic work themselves, don't tell anybody, develop it, and then at the last minute that they could wait, go in and say, we'd like to post these lands next year to the, to the uh, regulator. The regulators say, okay, but what happens then is that no one else has the information, no one has time to get it, no one has time to process it, so obviously what you're doing is creating a situation where there's not a lot of competition in that bid. So what we did at Nalcor, working with the province and a regulator, uh, you know, our staff put in, a, put in a, a process where the regulator has now changed the system, it's changed, and now the regulator, Newfoundland and Labrador, and the federal government, the regulator, now they say, this land here is going to be posted at a certain time in the future, three or four years in the future, and we tell the world that. And Elkhorn has done all this seismic work with some private companies, and we offer it to them. We say, you're interested, come and see us now. That's being posted in three years. Here's all the information you'd ever need. Here's some processing. Here's what's out there. Here's an assessment of what's out there. Now go do your own assessment. And, what's, we, and we've been going worldwide for the past three years getting this off the ground. And this fall is going to be our first, uh, is going to be our first bid under that new system. So you can imagine what's going to happen, we're seeing it, is that now everyone has the same data. We're expecting to have, even in the low price environment, we're expecting to have more bids, higher bids. What they're going to start finding out there is going to be very, very exciting. And our strategy is, we have, right now we have 5% of all of our lands under license. It's going to rapidly increase. That's going to drive investment like it did in Norway. And what happened in Norway, I expect is going to happen here. The problem is not going to be keeping bull arm going. The problem is where is all the work going to go? Because you say we had a a Hibernia and a Hebron and a Stad Oil, a Beta Nord product, and say they overlap by two years. What's going to happen then? The problem is not going to be Bull Arm or Marystown. The problem is going to be, okay, we've got to make some decisions. We're going to wait, we're going to, you know what I mean? And that's our other part of our strategy is to drive the actual developments to fill those yards. So that's sort of what's happening there. And uh, so coming up 2017, Beta Nord, if it happened, I'd have to talk to Stad Oil. I'm thinking early 2020s. But I'm not speaking for them. So there's going to be a bit of a gap there that we're working on now to fill, as I mentioned, with, uh, with overflow work, other opportunities that may come up. We're not sitting on our heels. But the longer term strategy, I think, is very bright for that, for that facility. I have a quick question. Go ahead. OK. Uh, you mentioned about 2041 is, is, is not too far off. But anyway, it's like we'll have to do inter negotiations with Quebec again and say if it comes becomes problematic, is there a capability of bringing power from Church Falls back here to go through the Nova Scotia route? Um, very good question, and, and uh, let me address the first part, because uh, I think you put your finger on it, about the 25 years. Uh, whatever happens is going to have to be dealt with very soon, because 25 years in this business is, is, is nothing. I mean, I'm looking at Muskrat Falls, by the time we get Muskrat Falls online, I think 13 or 14 years are going to have passed. Construction, environmental, all the goes on, engineering, that's Muskrat Falls. So, um, a Hebron or a, a Hebron project would have, you know, I mean, that's been similar. These big projects take a long time. So, uh, if uh, Quebec uh, is interested in the power post 2041, um, they're going to need power post 2041. Churchill Falls provides 15 to 20% of Quebec's full power needs. So if, 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 if for some reason Churchill Falls power didn't go to Quebec, they have to replace that power. 
uh, a size of the plant of uh, Churchill Falls doesn't exist anymore anywhere in the world. I mean, you know, it's going to take three, five, six plants and developments in Quebec to replace that power. More remote areas, higher transmission costs, environmental approvals. How long will it take? Do the numbers to do four, five, six projects to replace that power. When you do the numbers, it becomes evident that something has to be decided. Now, from our perspective, we're in a, we're in a, you know, I guess for my advice, I don't think it's all about Quebec anymore. It's about Newfoundland and Labrador. I mean, we have the power we need until forever, actually, because we have the link now. We have, uh, you know, muskrat power, we'll have upper turrets of power, we do nothing else, we're set. We have the power we need. We have a link the other way. We can carry on and do very, very well. Um, so now we're in a situation, what are we going to do with the upper Churchill? Well, would we like to sell it to Quebec? We'd love to, at the right price. I mean, it's just business. Uh, would we love to sell some to Ontario? Certainly, as long as the price is right. Uh, and we're, we're working all those options, and we will work all those options. What's the alternatives? I mean, if you've got um, 5,400 megawatts of power, I mean, we're selling it now at a quarter percent uh, to Hydro Quebec which is the equivalent of $2.50 per megawatt hour. The market today, at its lowest, is probably 30 to 40 bucks per megawatt hour. Um, to replace it is costing $150 per megawatt hour. So two to, you know what I'm saying? So we in essence have a, have a huge uh, asset, fifth largest in the world, that is fully paid and really has minimal operating costs. So it's the closest you're going to get to Nothing free, but it's pretty low cost power. So then I say to myself, can we build a line around? Yes, we can. Can we finance it? Well, we're proving it now, aren't we? You know what I mean? We just did it. Uh, we're going to have proven the DC technology group. We're building an 1,100 kilometer direct current line from Muskrat Falls to Soldier's Pond, and we're going subsea. You know, we're building 180 kilometers uh, subsea, two lines going from Nova Scotia to, to Newfoundland. We're getting the power on through to, right now, we're selling power in Ontario, New York, New England, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. We've made sales right now with our current recall power. We've proven the technology, so can we go around? Absolutely. What can you finance with 5,400 megawatts of essentially no-cost power? You can finance one hell of a lot with that. And, uh, and on top of that, um, you know, we have to look at the aluminum industry. We'll have the lowest power cost in, in, in the world. We'll have nothing, we won't be using it. And, um, you know, aluminum is like putting electricity in boats, right? One of the biggest inputs into aluminum is electricity. So what if we decided uh, that we wanted to build two, three, four big uh, aluminum plants on Labrador and on the island and uh, set up five new towns? That could be a possibility. But we have to make those decisions now too, right? None of that can happen in 2039. So I think all those things are possible, and I guess the bottom line from our perspective, I think it's not about Canada, it's not about Quebec, it's not about New England, it's about Newfoundland and Labrador. We have ourselves positioned now with the oil and gas, with muskrat, everything's working. We can sit and we don't have to do anything. So now we're, it's just a pure business decision for us. And I keep saying, let's take the politics out of it, you know, take the history out of it. It's just business. And uh, what we're going to do is find the right deal and keep moving. Excellent, thanks. <coughs> I want to expand on that question. I was going to ask a similar question, actually. Uh, are there any loopholes in that? I mean, we're working on the assumption that come 2041, power's back in Newfoundland's hands. Aren't there loopholes, both uh, contractual and political, that Quebec can pull to say, hang on now, we can't do that. We can't turn it over to Newfoundland. The feds will, feds will step in, somebody will step in and say, Newfoundland's not going to get this, this power. All of a sudden, Quebec's turned off. Do you really think that by 2041 we will have that free and clear? Um, two parts to your question, and I'm glad you asked it that way. First, from a contractual perspective, it's crystal clear. Uh, because uh, everything in 2041, not only the power contract, but the power contract is up now, in the next couple of years, and the renewed contract comes in. That's over. There's a shareholder agreement that was put in place 15, 20 years ago, for a whole bunch of reasons. That's gone. Um, you know, so there's no contracts in place. Nothing's in place at that point. The owners of that plant are 65% Newfoundland, and Labrador, and Alcor, and 35% um, and Hydro-Quebec and Quebec. So we have, you know, uh, 
clear, full majority. Uh, we'll have to operate within the, and, and rightly so, within the confines of the, of the Canada Business Corporations Act. But that just says you've got to make smart decisions and be, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, and uh, you know, treat all shareholders similar, but it doesn't change the vote. So there's no contracts in place at that point. Power goes back. And then we will decide with 65% vote what's the best business decision and then what will we have from there. So there's, that's crystal clear that, uh, uh, that the contractual issue is not in politically. Uh, who knows? But I think once again, uh, you know, from that perspective, we, we have to think about the country, not a province. And uh, and that's what we're in the process of doing. And I'll go back to say is that, you know, all they can do would be to block us at the border. Should never happen. Won't happen. Can't happen. But we have to plan, sir. We have to be able to say, just shrug our shoulders and say, so be it. You know, this is why, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we're developing the subsea technology. We're developing the expertise. To we're looking at our, you know, at other options. We have to be prepared to do something else. If that's what it is. And, you know, that's just normal business to be able to have alternatives versus that. But make no mistake, um, you know, no one thought we were going to do what we're going to do now either. But it's all, you know, it's all laid out so that Newfoundland and Labradorians have options and make sure that we're not getting isolated by the country uh, or by Quebec. And um, and I think we're demonstrating that. Who else in the who else in, in, in North America or Europe in the last 12 years have done billion dollar deals with Exxon, or you know Chevron, uh, Suncor, Husky, you know White Rose, Terra Nova, uh, you know Hibernia, Hebron, White Rose Extension, Hibernia Extension. Who, we've done the Amira deal. We managed to uh, you know cre to create the partnership with our Inu brethren that you know people said would never be done uh, with the New Dawn Agreement. Um, you know, we have uh, we've arranged uh, you know other arrangements with large with, with large contractors. And you list them down. Uh, I think we were demonstrating to. I mean, federal loan guarantee. We thought that was going to happen. Uh, we placed five billion dollars in the bond market, the largest bond financing uh, ever undertaken, undertaken in the country for Muskrat Falls. Money's in the bank at 3.8 percent interest for uh, between 35 and 40 years. Triple A credit rating from the federal government. You know, I think we're demonstrating that we're going to get, we're, we're going to make our moves, right? And it's done for only for the reason of making it good for people with problems. There's no big strategy out there to do this bad to someone or bad to someone. There's nothing to do with it. Everything's designed now around our future and what it takes, and we're going to make the steps to do it. And we're also going to have the oil and gas business sitting there. Which let me tell you, I mean, you know, I'm a conservative person. I shouldn't. I guess I should. I, I think I, you're talking North Sea size and better. Uh, you know, that is going to be. Uh, another big investment tool is also going to end up helping us fund the electricity infrastructure to get all this stuff done. Why wouldn't we take chunks of that capital and put it into renewable? And then you're looking at a situation where you're coming out of 2041, 2045, 2050. I know it sounds like a long time away, but it's really not. When uh, most of us, will, some of us won't be here, I guess, but uh, a lot will be. And the youngsters will be here. They'll be sitting on a situation where, you know, you have massive hydroelectric resources. Uh, that all we, all we can sell into the biggest market in the world with the transmission line set up to do it. The marketing group set up to do it. Oil and gas uh, revenues, which would be unprecedented. And all that's there for our taking right now. And we have a population of 500,000 people. Uh, you know, you think of the numbers, they're staggering. We just have to stay the course. We just have to stay the course.